<sighs> Anytime you get to use the milling machine, you know it's going to be a good day. So what we're doing next is we are going to make some modifications to our intake. Now if you've been following the channel for a uh, good length of time, you will recognize this intake. This is the first intake that we ever made for a Vortec 4200, and that was on my 1963 Studebaker Lark. Now the reason that the intake is here and not on the car is because we actually plan to make some changes to that car which I'm not ready to talk about yet. So we plan to use this intake on the Datsun. Uh, it actually fits surprisingly well, but as I mentioned in the previous video, we plan to do some things differently on the Datsun that we haven't done on any other combo. One of those changes is I want to run methanol. Now, in order to run methanol, you need to have quite a bit more fuel flow than ethanol or pump gas. So what that requires is you need a lot more fuel injectors. And in our case, we are going to add a second row to this intake. Now, I'm gonna give a little PSA to uh, the engineers out there. Anytime you're designing something, you need to think about, how am I gonna weld that? How am I gonna assemble that? What happens when I need to service that? How am I gonna get that bolt out? So I designed this piece right here. It is a extra injector rail, but I originally designed it without having these little pockets in it. And I probably should have thought a little bit more of how I'm actually going to weld this to the intake. Um, I figured I would have to make some modifications to this piece. Um, and it's not really that big of a deal, but the main point of this piece was to get all of the injectors lined up in relation to each other and get my bolt holes for my fuel rails located so that it could be welded onto the intake and everything would be in alignment. So in order to get this thing welded to the intake, I machine these little pockets out and that will allow me to weld from the top. But first we need to mill a hole in this intake that matches this sort of weird looking shape so that we can get this welded into the intake. So let's get to work. All right guys, we're working on our cold air induction to the turbos. The car was already set up with a six inch 
air induction. We got this piece of tubing off of a fire truck and it sort of went straight like that back into the carburetor and into the small block Chevy that used to live there. But now we're doing something a little dip bit different. So we need to redirect the air off to the side and towards the turbos. And then we need it to split off into two four inch sections and make its way into the turbos. So dad made this little uh, template blank in order to uh, give us an idea of what the Y piece was going to look at look like that he made out of an old Folgers coffee can and some tube laying around and some scraps from under the bench and then from there he used that blank to make a template for a piece of tubing that will be formed to be half of the Y fitting and then he laid it out on a flat piece of aluminum and ran it through the roller and came up with this guy. So this is obviously half of what we need and it will probably require a little bit of trimming but if you look at the front of it, nice and round, looks like a six inch semicircle and on this end it is a four inch outlet so we're going to go from a six inch inlet to a dual four inch outlet and that should provide nice cool air for our turbos and hopefully make a lot more power a lot of people go away from the stock fuel rail on a lot of applications just because it might be ugly or it might have a uh, regulator built in or they might have a sponsor with some fancy intake and they want to run their sponsor's part. Well, the problem with doing that is most aftermarket fuel rails do not have a provision for a injector retaining clip. In my opinion, that is a mistake. Most OEMs have to think about all of the possible ways that a system can fail and they oftentimes put a whole lot more thought into things than say an aftermarket supplier. This is especially true on your fuel rails and I have a factory one right here. Now a lot of people that follow this channel probably don't follow Colette Davis. She is another YouTuber on the platform who mainly does drifting and um, that sort of thing and she recently had a car fire. What they found the cause to be was her uh, fuel rail actually wiggled loose and the injector was able to uh, become detached from the fuel rail and started spraying fuel. It actually got fuel vapor into the cabin of the car. Then it found an ignition source and uh, nearly caught her on fire. Their solution to the problem uh, was to, when they rebuild the car, uh, put blue Loctite on the threads. This is probably a sufficient solution to the problem, but having a uh, second security measure is never a bad idea, especially with things like fuel. So what the factory does is they actually have a little clip that goes on the top of the injector, which registers in with the fuel rail. <laughs> like so. So if the fuel rail were to happen to wiggle loose, it's still retained by this clip.
got these secondary fuel injector bungs welded in and I'm now working on the mounts for the fuel rail. This is just a factory 4200 fuel rail. For our primary injectors, we're probably going to run decapped um, stock injectors. But for our secondary injectors, we're going to run some Snake Eater Performance Genuine Bosch 210 pound injectors. And they just push right in like this. And then you just run the bolts down into here and that will hold everything in alignment. So that's using the factory uh, fuel rail supports. So hopefully that all does well for us. Also, I worked on redoing the throttle body on this intake. We are going to a uh, LS four bolt style throttle body. We needed to relocate it to be further down and further forward so that we could get around some obstacles. While I've been working on this, my dad has been working on my dad has been working on the cold air intake on the car as well as he has gotten the uh, fuel cell mounted, he's gotten the radiator mounted, he's made a fan shroud. As you saw earlier, my dad made this custom Y connection. I think this came out super nice. Um, I'm pretty proud of it. So when we started this project, a lot of you probably were like, oh, wow, there's tons of room in there. Well, as you can see, stuff is starting to fill up. We're starting to run out of room for a lot of stuff. And, uh, you know, it may be very long, but it's very narrow. So we're really starting to, um, <laughs> starting to look like uh, 10 pounds of stuff in a 5-pound bag, which I think is kind of a cool look. All right guys, you're gonna see us using a lot of these uh, weld-in uh, NPT bungs that we got from our friends at Monkey Fab Garage. And we're gonna use it in places like this coolant manifold. And we're going to use that to adapt to a Dash 16 fitting. Now a lot of you are gonna say, that's just another place to leak. Well, that's also another place that you can uh, save your butt at the track in case something goes wrong. So you can always run a tap into a threaded bung like this one, but if you smash, you know, say you were to weld this onto that coolant manifold and just have a Dash 16 fitting sticking out, if you were to drop the thing and damage your AN um, taper here, that's really hard to fix. So uh, that's why we choose to run bungs like this with uh, fittings like this, so that you can, uh, if you damage your AN fitting, you just unscrew this, grab another one, screw it back in, and you're back on the road. guys we got a whole bunch of work done off camera you'll notice that we have charge pipes going to the intake manifold and like I mentioned earlier we're running methanol so there is no intercooler we have uh, the two charge pipes coming down this side of the car and then they merge together 
in the front of the vehicle. I actually had one of our sponsors, Monkey Fab Garage, fabricate that dual two and a half to single four inch uh, merge connection for us. Uh, big thanks to them. Make sure you guys go check out uh, his products. If you guys are into the DIY fab stuff, he's one of the best options out there and you can't beat the price. Also, we have the coolant system almost fully wrapped up. Since we will be running ethanol on the primary fuel system, we still need to have a radiator to keep it uh, somewhat cool while it's running on the ethanol. I know a lot of methanol cars end up just deleting all that, but we're still gonna have that in place on this car. Also, I made some significant modifications to the factory fuel rail, but I'm gonna cover that more in the next video where we talk about the how-tos of methanol on a turbo car. So I'm really happy with how this car is coming out. I think this is probably one of the uh, cleanest and most unique builds that we have ever done. And I'm stoked to show you guys what's coming up next on it. So make sure that you stay tuned for that. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Maybe consider becoming a channel member by hitting the join button down below. This thing's gonna be running in no time, guys. See you in the next one.